a spring is extended by a force and the variation is shown. So this is a very nice graph that obeys Hooke's law. State the, state the name of the law that relates the force and extension of the spring. I just said the answer. Hooke's law. Hooke's law, generally, you can say that force is proportional to extension. No intercept, nothing. Just F equals to KX. So you should start from original. So you see, hmm, start from origin. Very good. Straight line, yes, correct. So that is Hooke's law. Straight line through origin. This is B1. So from the graph, you might want to determine the spring constant. There are a few ways to do this. F equals to KX. So K, you can take either a ratio of force against X. You can do this because it's a straight line through origin. Or you can also find the gradient of this graph. In this particular case, if it's a straight line through origin, both of these are the same. Ratio of FX versus gradient. So from the graph, we go and find out. Choose a point. I really like this end point up here on the top. So this is 5.0 and 7.0. Please be careful. This is in cm. So we must remember this is in cm. And this one is in Newton. So if you want to just take a ratio, you can do that. Or if you want to find gradient, then this is your gradient triangle. The other point is 0, 0. So let's plug in the value here. K will be your gradient or just a ratio. So you can take 7 Newton. And down there is 5 cm. Wait, they want in meters, so you must convert to meters. You see the right side on top of my head here? They want in newtons per meter, so you gotta convert. And this will give you 140. So you can write 140 newtons per meter. Here's one mark here. One if you apply Hooke's law. So you sub values into Hooke's law. That's a C1 mark. So we got. The spring constant, let's find the strain energy in the spring when the extension is 4. Are they finding change in energy? No, they're finding at 4. So at 4, where is 4? Well, how much energy is stored in the spring? 4 cm is here. Dun, 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 dun. And you will have a certain extension and a certain force that causes that extension. So this point here is 4 and 5.6. I think that's about right. You zoom in on your PDF or your paper and look carefully. Lah. That's about 4, 5.6. So to find energy in the spring, there are a few equations you can do that. The first one, the mother and the main equation, ES, is the area under the graph. So area under the graph in this case would be a really big area, actually, this whole thing. This one is work done to stretch a spring, also known as elastic energy, elastic potential energy stored in the spring. But you can also use, because it's a triangle, right? This area under the graph, you can also express it as half F times X. Because, you know, triangle area, this is the force, this is the displacement, so Fx is your... Area. Another way you can express this is you sub in Hooke's law, you get half kx squared. Plug f equals to kx into here. Which one you want to use? I, up to you. I'll just write half times the force times the extension. Now you know why I do this? Why I use this method? Why I prefer this method or this method? Because if I use the one with kx, if my spring constant I calculate wrong and I use the wrong value here, ooh, I'm going to lose some marks. So this one, uh, you might carry forward your error and propagate it. So I prefer, if I can, I don't want to use the value that I calculate in case this one is wrong. So I use fx, oh, area under the graph. Use the graph. This will give me 0 0.112 or you can round off to 0 0.11. Here's one mark. The other one comes from your idea of equation. Either any one of these uh, also can. Right, next. Now we have, oh my goodness, look at this setup. <laughs> look at this setup. So one end of the spring is hanging there. And uh, you, have, you have a cylinder that's hanging from it in the liquid some more. Whoa. Show that the upthrust acting on the cylinder is 0 0.6. What is upthrust again? Uh, wait, 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 wait. So we look at this diagram. Uh. 
You have a few forces acting on this thing, you know. Your cylinder has a weight. So it's quite heavy. So it's gonna have... Uh, draw, draw this MG weight. But you also have a spring that pulls this thing upwards. So forces acting on the cylinder. There's weight. There's a force by spring. This is your F equals to KX. Pulling it up. And there's another force due to the liquid called the upthrust force. Or just upthrust lah. You just call this U for upthrust. So there's really three forces acting on this object. And you want to find the upthrust. What's the definition of upthrust again? Kind of forgot already. So it's... Mm, how to show this? Upthrust, you can remember that it is firstly uh, pressure difference, but we don't know much about pressure yet. You see in part 2, they want to calculate pressure later. We don't know pressure yet. So we got to think of the equilibrium happening here. Is this in equilibrium? Is the spring equilibrium? Ah, oh, yes. Magic sentence. Equilibrium here means that your net force is zero. So if you look at just the cylinder itself, I'll treat this as a... I'll just draw a point. What are the forces acting on the cylinder? Downwards weight. Uh, upwards Hooke's law, which is the spring force. And also upwards up thrust. Kind of like that. So all these forces should cancel each other out. If I add them all together. Let's write it out. So in the net force is zero. Means all the forces cancel out. Which means I can say the downwards force equals to all those pointing upwards. So Kx plus U. If I rearrange, that means the up thrust will be Mg minus Kx. Mg is the weight. Nah. Oh, yeah, I just say weight. Nah, weight. Weight is given to us. This is our Mg already. So we just write here 6.20 minus kx. How to find kx? Oh, we found the kx previously. Where's my spring constant? There we go. Use the previous spring constant. 140. Right here. 140 times. What's the extension? Given to us. This is our x. So I write here. 4 cm, 4 times 10, negative 2. Because everything's in meter. This will give me about uh, 0 0.60 newton. Proven! Very good. One mark only? Ah, yeah. If you substitute everything into the correct equation, it's okay. Sub. Into the force equation. So if you didn't get this answer, it's okay. You take this value and you continue on to the next part of the question. Because they ask you to show only, ma, right? So now we have to calculate the pressure difference between the bottom and the top face of the cylinder. You have to remember a bit why is there up thrust? Ah? Okay, we, if we look at this, uh, this object, why, why, what causes an up thrust? If you are in the liquid, you will have very uh, low pressure here and down here very high pressure. So across this cylinder, because of a certain length, there is a pressure difference. Because of that pressure difference, there will be what we call an upthrust, which is a force. So upthrust force is due to pressure difference on the top and low part of the cylinder. So haha, how to find out? Uh, how to find pressure difference? Uh, uh we think anything we're like, miss, can we use this one? Uh, pressure is rho g h. Yeah, but you don't find you don't have enough information. We don't know the density. And we don't know the pressure. So too many unknown. We can't use this. Maybe we might use it later in the second part. Yes. We need to find density. We we don't know density yet. We cannot use this equation. So what's another what's another possible equation that has pressure in it? Well, I guess it's the main definition already. Lah. If you have a cylinder and this has a certain area, you have a force acting on it. Uh, which is up thrust. Then you can have pressure is force per unit area. But in our case, our force, I'm going to rub that off, is up thrust. So up thrust will be a pressure times area. Hmm. Okay. So we find pressure first. Huh? So this will be 0 0.6 that they gave to us. 0 0.60. 
Ooh, add another one. Pressure. No, no. Cross section area. Yeah, they give it to us. This is the area. Cross section area. 1.2 times 10, negative 3. So here, I underline. We're going to use that value. So that will be on this side. 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 will give us a pressure of 500. Now, you're going to remember a little bit. Okay, this pressure per unit area means by the time difference in pressure, can la, can use la, 500. So here, one mark is the final answer, 550. Another mark will come from your equation or substitution, either one of it. Depends on the official mask scheme, so go check that out. Okay, so that's this part. Now the final part, we couldn't use this because we didn't know density. Now we finally come to that. Calculate density of liquid. Well, 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 what do we have here? So, let's rewrite our favorite equation. P equals to rho G H. Now, we're going to use our old pressure. La. Whatever pressure we got here, we're just going to plug that in. 500 pascals is a lot. What kind of density, li dense liquid is this? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> anyway, so it's right here. Uh, 500 pascals, some density, who knows what, times 9.81, times the height of the cylinder. So the cylinder from here to here is 5.8 cm. So 5.8 centimeter. Now strictly speaking, this is actually a change in pressure. La. I mean, we're not very strict about it, but if you want to just write the symbols to remind yourself, those change in height cause a change in pressure. Change in pressure is related to the up thrust, which is what we found earlier. So density is about 878.77. I mean, final answer, I can write 880. It's okay. One mark here. One mark if I sub into the correct values, all the uh, 500, 9.81, and 5.8. So this one, kind of a bit hard. If you are here, you don't know what the value is, then you are kind of stuck. It's okay. If you don't know, you're stuck. You just write some equations. You might get a mark from it. Maybe. Uh. So now your liquid is replaced with a liquid of a greater density. Ooh, something is changed. State the effect on the up truss and the extension of the spring. Okay, let's think about what happens to greater density. When there's a greater density, your up truss is related to the change in pressure, which is related to the rho g change in height. So if your thing is more dense, that means the pressure difference is increased, which means the up thrust is also increased because they're all related. So up thrust is greater. So up thrust increases. Or is greater. How about extension of the spring? Now we have to think back to our, our setup again. Um, the thing is in equilibrium, right? So if your, your up thrust has increased, your spring don't need to do so much work uh, to pull the whole thing up so this one can decrease. How do we know that? Because remember, the equilibrium goes like this, W equals to U plus Kx. Up thrust is getting bigger and bigger already, so your spring force will have to decrease. Hence, extension will have to decrease because you need to maintain equilibrium and balance out with weight. So let's go. Spring don't need to do so much work, very nice. Okay, so extension here will decrease. And this is related to the idea of your spring, Kx, spring force is W minus U. So here is one mark, if you get it correct. Here's another, you get it correct. 12 in total, wow, this is a long question. Huh? Okay, so that's all for this video. Go check out some of the revision of these topics. If you're like, wow, I don't remember how to deal with liquids. Check out some of the video, the chapters, and you'll be okay. Alright, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.